I'm here with Tom Lane, who is the General Manager Commercial of Rocket Apples. Kia ora, Tom, and thanks for joining me. Good, good to be here, Andrew. Thank you. Now, um, obviously, uh, Tom, uh, Rocket Apples is uh, synonymous with Hawke's Bay, and uh, you just recently announced that you're moving into the South Island. Tell us a bit about that that new venture. Mm. Yeah, look, uh, we're definitely a, a Hawke's Bay-based company, and uh, we'll continue to be so. Uh, you know, the, the variety was developed and commercialised in Hawke's Bay, uh, it's where our home base is at Tiapu and the, the bulk of our supply base uh, with Hawke's Bay growers. Um, we expanded into Gisborne uh, over the last couple of years. So we've now got just over 100 hectares planted in Gisborne. Um, that's on top of 750 hectares planted in Hawke's Bay. Uh, so we're sitting around 850 hectares, but we're continuing to look to the future and making sure that we future-proof our supply chain. Uh, Cyclone Gabrielle, if it taught us anything, was that the East Coast has exposed to very similar weather patterns. Yeah. Um, for some time before that, we'd been thinking about how we could build resilience into our system. And so we'd been doing uh, some climate scenario modeling, looking at a different a range of different scenarios and trying to figure out what effect they would have on Apple supply programs. And that prompted us to look at different regions. Um, and Canterbury really came up as a, a good opportunity to complement uh, the Hawke's Bay, East Coast, uh, North Island supply chain. Okay, no, that, that sounds great. And now um, your, your market, what is your market? Is it mainly an international market, is it? So we sell 99.8% of our apples offshore. Uh, key markets for us are very much the greater China, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East. Um, but we're seeing significant growth into North America. Um, and then alongside our New Zealand growers, we've also got uh, a footprint of growers in nine other countries who primarily supply their domestic markets. So that includes Australia and Europe. So tell us a bit about the concept of rocket um, apples, because when you think of apples, many people think of these big, luscious, juicy apples, but but you've gone for quite a, a niche a taste and a niche market. Tell us um, what, what the ideal rocket apple looks like. Yeah, I think um, it, the way we've approached it is very much starting to think about the, uh, the consumer occasion and... Uh, I certainly remember that from my school days and uh, we've got a young daughter as well. And so no doubt are about to experience the same thing of a half eaten apple sitting at the bottom of a school bag or mm -hmm. uh, festering away in the school locker. Um, so you know, there's absolutely a place for the, the wonderful big apples that New Zealand's well known for. But we've really honed in on an occasion where um, people are looking for a healthy on-the-go snack, um, something that they can take a couple of bites and um, get that that healthy hit and carry on with their day. So the thinking behind Rocket is very much how do we meet a consumer requirement rather than selling a product and um, for a consumer to make a decision about. So that's how we've approached it right from the way, right from the ground up. So the apple is a very crisp, um very sweet it's well suited to the asian markets where we sell very strongly um the packaging that we then put it into is designed to really be a grab and go type of proposition so we're really seeing a significant expansion in the convenience markets um in the us we've signed up a significant number of convenience stores there and seeing that sort of same growth across southeast asia and the middle east um we've just signed a deal with costa coffee last year cost is sort of a, a starbucks competitor similar scale uh, in the middle east their stores were struggling with the, the idea of how do you sell an apple or a banana i think most people would have been used to seeing the you know the, the flowery apple or the slightly bruised banana sitting in the counter yeah. um, we've designed a two-pack piece which is great for uh, those types of stores where it comes in a shelf ready pack all the store has to do is peel off the top and it's ready to serve. It's got a barcode so they can scan it out. And the properties of the apple mean that it, uh, it keeps well um, and it's it's a particularly good experience for the consumer so they keep coming back. 
Um, the tube itself has a number of benefits, including um, helping keep the apple going. It's like a mini cool store. There's some proprietary features around the design we've got there. Yeah. But not just the product, but the marketing of the product that's that's significant to a part of your success. Right the way through, so that you know the, the product itself, we start with a grace apple, we put it in a um, in a functional packaging, uh, and then the marketing we wrap around. So this year we had a great brand partnership with Pokemon in China, um, that built on a previous campaign we'd run with Minions. Uh, to celebrate their new movie launch last year. And we've got a pretty exciting one lined up for this year that unfortunately I can't tell you about just okay. yet. Okay, great. Um, now, the apple itself. Um, mm. So this isn't just you going around and looking for smaller apples than normal <laughs> and shoving them into into uh, tubes. Uh, is it a, you, you've obviously got a varietal of apples. What, what's, what sort of varietal is this? Yeah, the, the apple was developed by Plant and Food Research as part of their breeding program. Um, that was a, it was a long process uh, and that is ultimately owned by Prevar. Um, so Prevar is the variety owner was looking for a partner to help commercialize. And Phil Allison was uh, probably best described as the maverick that saw the opportunity to combine the great eating apple with the, uh, with the packaging and the, the consumer proposition. So the apple is um, significantly smaller. It ranges sort of around that 80 to 90 gram size, whereas a normal apple would be 200 grams plus. Um, it is it is very crisp and very sweet, uh, more so than uh, than a lot of the more traditional varieties, um, and it has very good long keeping properties. Now, is there anything different uh, in the way you you harvest and uh, produce and uh, market uh, or not market but the whole process of getting it out to consumer than any other normal apple is there any sort of thing that you have to do differently um it's a good question is uh it, the, the apple the size of the apple being smaller than most uh, presents some unique challenges uh around picking um obviously you can't pick as many small apples in a day as you can big apples um so we have a slightly longer process there um, and then when it comes to the pack house we've got a specially designed pack house suited to the smaller apples it doesn't lend itself to uh, running through the same system as a bigger apple which really just comes down to size um, but rockets put a lot of focus into automation um, particularly in the pack house so on orchard we're lucky to benefit from the same uh, developments that many other apples do around uh, platform assist picking um, and a lot of the technology that sits in there but the robot pickers that some people may have seen operating in our pack house which is a, a series of robot arms that uh, with an algorithm that tells them which apple to pick up and fill it fill into a tube to get the perfect fill um, is very unique well so um, there's been yeah, yeah. carry on sorry no 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 yeah, so there's been a lot of research and development um, in fine tuning how your process. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And now, in terms of, I suppose, with a smaller apple, and um, the quality has to be even better than a bigger apple because I suppose there's less of it, kind of thing. <laughs> oh, look, I think uh, the thing that Hawke's Bay growers in particular are well known for is producing fantastic apples. And New Zealand apples have a strong following globally because of the quality that goes out. Um, that's a credit to both the growers and to the variety owners that have a strong commitment to, to delivering that excellent um, experience to consumers. I guess for Rocket in particular, though, because we uh, like to think, like to approach the market more like an FMCG product than a traditional um, apple that might turn up being sold loose in the primary oil, uh, primary produce oil consumers have slightly higher expectations and that's obviously tied into the price as well uh, um, every time you bite into a snickers bar or you have a can of coke you want that same same experience you don't really want a variation in taste so we work particularly hard to make sure that when consumers open a tube of rocket apples the um, the taste the flavor the texture etc are all very consistent and um, we certainly see that driving strong uh, consumption rates, repeat consumption rates for our product. 
And now what's this year's harvest looking like? Is it looking good? When when do you actually harvest apples? Is it around now or um, later on? No, so there's um, the orchards are a hive of activity, but uh, this is all around setting up for a successful harvest. We'll start harvesting in February. Okay. And is it looking good for, for this year? For next year? We've... Uh... <laughs> we've we've learned to be uh, to be very cautious, but I think we can say we're cautiously optimistic. Um, everything going according to plan, it'll be great. We're um, certainly with our orchards coming on stream, we're expecting to see a significant volume uplift um, as the orchards start to mature. Yeah. And and what are the expansion plans in Hawke's Bay? Do you have any further? You, we've spoken about you moving elsewhere. Is there any um, plans to sort of expand yeah locally as well? Absolutely. We're continuing to uh, to work with a number of growers that are expanding their existing rocket plantings and talking to new growers looking to develop rocket orchards. Um, we've been really pleased to see that a number of the growers that are uh, reconsidering their plantings following Cyclone Gabrielle are looking to re-establish orchards with rocket as a premium variety. So that's been really positive. Okay. And now... People see you say that it's marketed mainly as a snack. Are there any other uses for rocket apples? Any um, uh, is it just a case where however you want to use it in fruit salads, that sort of thing, or is it mainly just a, a snack? Yeah, I'd really recommend people go along to our website. We've got a, a range of great uh, recipes sitting on there, so uh, it can go into a, a savoury salad and add a and add a burst of flavour. Um, good as you say in a in a uh, fruit salad, but we've got a number of uh, partners that have come up with some amazing recipes for cakes. And I think there's even a uh, a drink in there that uh, uses rocket apples as its base. Uh, sounds good. All right, well, Tom Lane, thank you so much for your time and just telling us a bit more about rocket apples. I think everyone's heard of them and regard them as Hawke's Bay's own, but good to hear what you're actually doing in that. And thanks for your time. Not at all. Great to talk. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks.